Hello viewers, on your demand, I have made videos on specimen paper of maths and science all subjects. Now we are coming back to our regular syllabus. In my previous video, I have covered the topic of refraction of light. Today we are going to discuss simple applications of refraction of light. First of all, try to understand the difference between real and apparent depth. An object when placed in a denser medium, it means water or glass. When viewed from a rarer medium, it means air. It appears to be at a depth lesser than its original depth and this is because of refraction of light. The object is this at this point O. A ray which is incident normally on the surface goes undeviated. But second ray which is making an angle with the surface, it is bending away from the normal because the ray is going from denser to rarer medium. It is bending away from the normal and if we produce this ray backward, it meets the same line at this point I. So the ray when viewed from rarer medium, it means BC ray, it appears to be coming from this point BI, not from BO. So the object is not appearing at this point O, but it is appearing at this point I. It means this is the apparent depth which we view from the rarer medium rather than the real depth which is total this much AO. AO is the real depth. So, refractive index of medium with respect to air is equal to OA which it means this much real depth divided by IA it means apparent depth. So, OA upon IA is equal to real depth upon apparent depth. Now, shift. Shift is this much. It means real depth minus apparent depth or shift is equal to real depth brackets 1 minus 1 upon a mu m. Derivation is not required but the formula you need to remember for the calculation of numericals given in the exercise. Now the factors on which shift depends. First factor is mu it means refractive index. Shift is directly proportional to refractive index. When refractive index increases shift also increases. Second is thickness of the medium. It, it is again directly proportional as thickness increases, shift also increases. Third is wavelength or the color of the light. If wavelength increases, then shift decreases. It means inversely proportional to this third factor and directly proportional to both these factors. So, so shift is the difference between real depth and apparent depth. The object is actually at this point but appears at this point. Now, let us talk about few examples related with this phenomena. Refractive index of glass with respect to air is 3 upon 2. Therefore, the thickness of glass slab appears only two-third of its original thickness. Refractive index of water with respect to air is 4 upon 3. Therefore, water pond appears to be three-fourths of its real depth. A fish when seen from air appears to be nearer the surface than its actual depth. All these phenomena are related with refraction of light. Now we will talk about the apparent bending of stick under water. It is a straight stick. It is placed obliquely in water, inside the water and some part is outside the water. When viewed from the air, it means in the from the rarer medium, then we need to draw two rays. Two rays, when these rays strike this surface of air water, it is bending away from the normal because the ray is entering from denser medium water to rarer medium air. It is bending away from the normal. So, rays will go like this and we are watching from this side. So, if we produce these rays backward, they meet at this point and this stick appears to be at this point. It means it le its length shortened and the stick appears to be bent at this point and it is now appearing from this as XOP dash, not XOP. So, its length is shortened and it is bent because of refraction of light. Arrows are must in the diagram and rays should be straight. With the help of scale you need to draw, arrows are must and this bending of stick should be clear while drawing this diagram in your examination. You can see here, this is a paintbrush which is straight. When I put it inside a glass of water, which is almost 3 fourths filled with water, this stick appears to be raised. 
it means immersed part of the stick appears to be raised and therefore bent at the surface of water and therefore stick appears to be shortened in length. Now we are going to discuss the opposite case when the object is placed in the rarer medium or air and we are viewing this object from the denser medium you can say water. When we are viewing this object you can see the actual depth or real depth of this object from the water air surface is OA and this object is appearing at this point I. It means the apparent depth of object is appearing to us is AI. So, we are viewing the object from the denser medium and object is present in the rarer medium. So, its apparent depth is greater than real depth. Earlier, we are viewing the object from the rarer medium and the object is present in the denser medium. So, the real depth is more than apparent depth. Here, real depth is less than apparent depth. Now, we are going to discuss some consequences of refraction of light which you observed earlier also but now you can relate with science. First phenomena is a star appears twinkling in the sky due to change in refractive index of air with temperature. So, one mark you will get in all these examples if you write only refraction of light. It means this phenomena is interrelated with refraction of light. One mark in your examination you will get straight away. Second example is sun is seen a few minutes before it rises above the horizon in the morning. Third is a coin kept in a vessel is not visible just below the edge but can be viewed when water is poured into it. Fourth is a print appears to be raised when a glass slab is placed over it. Fifth is a tank appears shallow. It means at less depth than its actual depth. A person's legs appear to be shorter when standing in a tank. All these examples or consequences or phenomena are related with refraction of light. In your examination, if you just write refraction of light, you will get one mark straight away. Now, we are going to discuss about when light is traveling from a denser medium glass to a rarer medium air, making a small angle of incidence I with the normal. Suppose this is I angle of incidence and this is our incident ray. Suppose this is AO. Now, when it strikes the surface, it is partly refracted in the rarer medium air. And it is bending away from the normal because we know that light is traveling from denser to rarer medium. It means angle of refraction R is greater than I. And some part of this light is reflected back into the same medium. So, we get a weakly reflected ray in the same medium and strong refracted ray in the rarer medium air. But if we go on increasing this angle of incidence, we go on increasing this angle of refraction becoming larger and larger. Suppose angle of incidence is this, then angle of refraction is this much, this much, this much. A stage reaches when we increase this angle of incidence to such an extent that this ray will not refract in the other medium, rather it travels along with the surface. At this point of junction, this angle of refraction becomes 90 degree. So, this is our angle of incidence at which this angle of refraction is 90 degree. At this point, this angle of incidence is known as critical angle. In some books, it is shown as C. In some books, it is shown as I. Here, small c. So, angle of incidence is the denser medium corresponding to which angle of refraction in the rarer medium is 90 degree. This angle of incidence is known as critical angle. After this, if we further go on increasing this angle of incidence, a stage further reaches which no part is refracted in the rarer medium. All the light is reflected back into the same medium and this is the point we known as TIR or total internal reflection. It means I angle I is equal to R or I becomes I. Totally light is reflected back into the same medium. No light is refracting in the another medium. This is known as TIR. But for this TIR, two conditions to be satisfied. First is angle of incidence is greater than critical angle and second is ray must be traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium. For better understanding, we are drawing the diagram in another manner in which a 
point source of light is kept at this point A and we are going to change the angle of incidence and then going to relate with critical angle and total internal reflection also. So, first a ray of light is coming like this and striking this surface here with the normal. It is going from denser to rarer medium. It is bending away from the normal. It means here angle of incidence and this is angle of refraction. So, R is greater than I. But some part of it is reflected back into the same medium. Although it is a weak light, but still it is there. And one ray which is going straight, it is going undeviating. Now we are going to increasing the angle of incidence further. So if we increase this angle of incidence and it again strikes the surface, but at this stage, no ray is going refracted in another medium the ray comes on this surface only. If this angle of refraction becomes 90 degree, then this is our angle of incidence which is known as critical angle. So, critical angle is the angle of incidence in the denser medium corresponding to which angle of refraction in the rarer medium is going to be 90 degree. Some part of it is reflected. Now, if we further increase this angle of incidence, and it again strikes the surface, then we see that no part is refracted in another medium, rarer medium. All light is reflected back in the same medium. Here, angle of incidence is greater than critical angle and only reflected ray is coming in the same medium and no refracted ray. This is known as total internal reflection. So, when a ray of light traveling in a denser medium is incident at the surface of a rarer medium at an angle of incidence greater than the critical angle for this pair of media, the ray is totally reflected back into the denser medium and this phenomena is known as total internal reflection. For total internal reflection, two conditions we should keep in our mind because they can be asked in your examination also that light must be traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium. And second, the angle of incidence is greater than this critical angle for a given pair of media. Now, factors affecting the critical angle, first is color of light or you can say wavelength, lambda. We know that a wavelength of violet color is least, it means 4000 Armstrong and red is 8000 Armstrong. So, critical angle for red color is more than the critical angle for violet color for a given pair of media. It means directly proportional. Second factor is temperature. If te temperature increases and critical angle also increases, so it means it is also directly proportional with temperature. These two are the factors relating to critical angle. To show total internal reflection, I use this laser light inside this bottle, which is 3 fourths filled with water. So, rays entering from a denser medium to a rarer medium and you can see total internal reflection inside this water. But for better clarity, I need darkness. So, I am going to perform this experiment in darkness. Now, you can see here a ray of light is incident from a denser medium to a rarer medium and a part of it is refracted and reflected back in the same medium. Now, as I am going to increase this angle of incidence, now you can see when I increase the angle of incidence in the denser medium corresponding to which angle of refraction in the rarer medium is 90 degree. So, this is our critical angle. Now, if I am going to increase this angle of incidence further, this is TIR happening because total light rays reflected back in the same medium and no part of it is refracted in the rarer medium. So, this is total internal reflection. I am showing you this practically. I hope you have understood the topic covered till now. Now, we are left with only one topic which is total internal reflection in a prism. I will try to complete in my next video. Till then. Keep watching and sharing. Thanks a lot.